So I got an email yesterday from somebody uh, with this image attached asking if I could make a video making something like this where there's text and there's images and the entire design together has one background around it, a solid color and then this has another outline behind that background. Um, not going to try to trace this. There's writing, there's shading, there's, it's, it would just be an ugly trace. So I'm just going to make something similar and uh, show you how to do the background part. So I'm going to just make some text. Happy birthday. If I double click on one of the words, it'll highlight just that word, or you can just drag your cursor over the word, but either way, select one word, and I'm going to go find a font. That'll work. It's definitely not that font. If I really wanted to find that one, it's going to take a little bit more time. Um, for the sake of just teaching you the concept, we're just going to pick fonts. So we'll make birthday. found this one recently. I thought it was kind of cute. It's called Jungle Juice. <laughs> Alright, so now I have my... Go to my selector tool so that I'm selecting the whole object. Go path, object to path. And now each letter is its own path. Sometimes when you use fonts from, uh, like, downloaded ones, see this little line over here? That actually is not there. Um, if we, if I take this word and drag it over it, you'll see it disappears. Like a little ghost line that shows up sometimes. I don't know why it happens, but nothing to worry about. <laughs> um, so now I have my whole word highlighted. If I do Control plus plus, that is the same as doing Path Union. See over here, there's little shortcuts. I don't like using my mouse and going and using all these drop-down menus. So I kind of memorized most of the shortcuts, but most of the things that I use, you'll see me with the control buttons, you can do them with actual menu options if that's the way you prefer to do it. Um, so, back to my selector. Highlight this word, control plus plus. And now the words themselves are all one path instead of each letter being one. That's what we want. Now I'm going to take birthday and make it bigger. Let's drag it. And we'll put it under there. i got to move this out of the way a little bit. Um, for the balloons, I just went to Google. I googled clip art balloons and just grabbed a couple of black and white images. Um, something simple. They're not perfect. They're just balloons. But I'm going to go import them. So I go to File, Import. I think I threw them on my desktop. Here's one of them. If I hold my control button and scroll backwards with my mouse, it zooms me out. And also if I hold my control button and drag this in, it'll make it smaller without warping it. I keep the aspect ratio and just make it smaller. Now I gotta import the other one. Make that one smaller. And now I'm gonna have to trace both of these. The other thing, notice, these are not just free images. They might be free. I didn't go to the websites and really investigate it. I just grabbed, I just copied the images. If I was making something to, like, sell, I would not be using images like these. They have watermarks all over them. They have clear website names on them. They're somebody's images. Um, find free images if you're going to actually use them. I'm just doing this to show you how how to make something like this. So we're going to take this one, go to Path, Trace Bitmap. This is just a black and white image. I only need two colors. I actually don't even need colors on this. I can just do grays. I always take smooth off and I always remove I always add or remove background so that the white the white solid block behind it goes away. And there's my balloons. We have them now. Drag them off and delete the original. I'm gonna trace this one. Settings are all still the same, it remembers what you just did. So I just hit OK. Drag that one off and get rid of the original. So now these are my two images. This one, I just want these three balloons. So I'm going to zoom in. And if I double click anywhere on here, it gives me all the nodes. You can also click on the node. Let's see, I'm on selector. If I'm on selector and I select this, 
I go to the note editor, it does the same thing. But again, I just don't like being all over my screen. I'm going to drag a box around this balloon and get rid of it. And then I'm going to drag a box around this and get rid of that. Now I just have my balloons. Back to my selector. I'm going to make the balloons different colors just so they look cute. Whenever you're going to color something, make sure you click off of your object so that there are no, no items selected anywhere. There's no boxes or dotted lines anywhere on your screen. Then go to your paint fill bucket. We'll make one of them red. Hit the selector and then click off so that nothing is selected again. Paint bucket. Make one of them yellow. When I hit the selector, you'll see that object is selected. If I were to just hit my paint bucket again, it just changes the color. So just select off of it. Paint bucket. Purple. Now we want this whole group of items. When we move this around, we want to keep it together. So I'm going to hit Control G, which is the same as object group. See Control G. And now when I move it, my balloons don't all go all over the place. So we're going to put that one. We're just going to stick it over here for the moment. And drag this one over. Again, I want to get rid of this box on the bottom. But these are kind of intertwined with it. So you're probably going to get a little bit of, a, of ugliness there. But it's okay. Drag a box around that. Delete it. And now you get this. Because they were connected. All you have to do, I'll zoom in so you can see it. All this is, is the last node was attached to something else and we deleted them. So you're going to take these, these are just like little, they make the curves, and drag this back up to its node. So that there's no curve. And that is done. Now we have our balloons again. Alright, we're going to color these. Click off of everything. Pink bucket, we'll make one blue. And then click off and we'll make one green. And now we're going to group these. Control G. Now we have everything we need. Get this out of the way. These are my... We'll turn this a little. If I click on it once, you'll see that the arrows go from a resize arrow to a rotate arrow. I'm just going to spin that a little so it's out of the way of the H. And then we'll take these. Whoops. If I hit Control Z, it undoes. Because when I double clicked on that green balloon, it ungrouped them. So I'm going to group them again. Drag them over here. Rotate them just a little. See, these ones don't have the cute little squiggly strings. These are not balloons I would have picked if I was doing this for something I was actually going to make. But for the sake of teaching you how to do it, they will work just fine. So now I have everything. And everything is paths. So we could technically make these shadows on them. But to do them one at a time, it would look really kind of crappy. Um, so we want to make a shadow around this entire thing, all of these objects. This is like, I don't know, six or seven, eight different objects. Um, if I were to do, if I were to union this together so that it's one item and I could just make a shadow, it would all turn one color. We don't want it to all turn one color. We obviously have all different colors in there and we want to keep that. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this and make that all one color. So I have everything selected. I'm going to hit Control D, which is the same as... Where is that? Well, it's in one of these menus, but it's duplicate. It made a copy. So now I have a copy of this up here. We'll leave that one up there out of the way for now. And this one, we're going to highlight the whole thing again. And now we're going to make this all one object. If I go to path, I don't know if this is going to work. If I go to path, union, it didn't. It said one of the objects is not a path, cannot perform Boolean operation. I don't know why, but Inkscape does this sometimes. When I select a whole bunch of objects, sometimes they're not really all selected. If I go to my node editor, I can... Let me try that again. Yeah. They're not, for some reason, not letting me drag a box around these. If I hold my shift button and just click on my objects, now they're all selected. And now if I do path union, they union. And you'll see that it turned them all one color. But 
it's all one path now. Where up here, every item is its own path. So we have this, and we're going to do a linked offset. Path. Linked offset. It puts... Where's my diamond? If you ever don't get the diamond, sometimes, I don't know, Inkscape has its little idiosyncrasies. I always make sure it's actually a path. Just hit your whole thing and do object to path. And then try it again. Linked offset. Why am I not getting my nodes? There it is. My little diamond. The little diamond is what you're going to use to do the linked offset. The other thing is, I'm going to undo this, but just to show you, if I were to just do this, all it does is kind of swell. See that? You can't see where your offset is. Undo. So what I do when I'm doing this is I change the color of the offset so that now when I pull it out, you can actually see it. Um, and we don't want all of these white spaces in here. We want a nice, almost solid background, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger until it kind of fills in most of that. You can get rid of the rest of it, I'll show you how in a second, but we want the background to be a little bit thicker. If you look over here, it was a little bit thicker. So that's about where I'm going to put it. Now this object, we're going to take... Whoops, they're still grouped together. I'm going to get rid of the original balloons. We don't need this one anymore. This was its only purpose. I don't need this. So we're going to get rid of this one. Now we have our first shadow layer, but you can see it's got all of this crap inside it, all these little white spaces. We do not want all of that to cut. We want this to be solid. But if we were to double click on this right now, you're going to see that it's not really a regular path yet. You see, you still get your diamond. You can still make this bigger or smaller. When you do any kind of manipulation like that to a path, you have to then turn it back. You have to do object to path on it again. And now you'll see all the nodes. Now in here, to clean this up, you can actually go through here and just delete all of these nodes. But when you get into a really big image, that becomes a pain in the butt. So we're going to go to the selector, and then go to Path, Break Apart. And that basically selected all the nodes for us again. And then Union, and it makes them all one item again. So now our path is just the outline, which is all we want to cut. Your machine is not going to like you cutting eight billion nodes, you're going to bring it into design space and it's going to tell you it's too big of an object. So now we have our first shadow. This is going to be the white layer. I don't make it white when it's on a white screen because then you can't see it. So we have it gray right now. Now this one, we're going to do this black outline. So we're going to do another outline here. Linked offset again, and there's my diamond again. And this time I'm going to make it black. We're going to just make that little outline around this. Drag that up a little. That's good. So now this item, again, I have to make this object a path again. So that I see the nodes. And now I have my two shadow layers. The inner one, we're going to turn white. And we have the outer one. I zoom out a little bit so I can reach this again. Make sure we have the whole item. The other thing is, once you start doing this, when I once I duplicated these objects, be careful not to resize either of them, or the other one's not ever going to sit back on the first one the same way again. So now we're going to bring this and put it in there. And we have, it's obviously not the same image, but it's the same, it's got solid white background. You could turn this background, that looks like the outer one actually. You could turn the background different colors if you want. Um, but there you go, that's how you make a background around anything that you make. The whole design, just group it together, duplicate it, and then make it one object so you can make your, uh, your offsets. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, thank you for the suggestion. I believe her name was Nikima. Um, if you have any ideas, give me a, a shout, wendye524 at gmail.com. Or you can post comments on the video. And uh, thanks again, and we'll hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye bye.